All right, we are coming to you hot. So hello, hello. Uh, if you have not been tuning in for the webisodes, you definitely want to go back and watch some of them. They are on the Epic Sexy You YouTube channel because these are amazing. And what's really cool is Erin has been my bestie for a very long time. She could tell you probably exactly because she has a memory that is like an elephant. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, you, so let's just call it ballpark. I'm more of a ballparker. Let's say like 15 years ish. I might be giving us a little bit more, but that's okay. And uh, it dawned on me that it would be really selfish of me to keep the conversations that Aaron and I have had to ourselves. So let me just start off with an intro. I am Morgan Field, and I am the founder of the Epic Sexy You Movement, which is now in 18 countries and counting. And I'm a life coach, and I'm an intuitive, and I help people create a dream, a life, a business, and a body beyond their wildest dreams. Um, and so it's really just about the, what's really cool here is Aaron and I have had all these conversations as we've been on our own journeys of expansion, increasing our consciousness, growth, stepping into bodies we really love being in, figuring out how to create epic adventures in our own unique way, how to look and feel sexy, how to be unapologetically ourselves. And we just started spitballing and we're like, why don't we share these conversations with others? So definitely go back, listen to some of the previous webisodes. Uh, there, you're going to hear about how to stop buying your own bullshit and others bullshit. You're gonna learn about some of the avatars that might be getting in your way, whether it's your comfy slob, whether it's your victima or victimo, whether it's your perfectionist or your perfectionista, your perfectionisto. There are a lot of different versions of you that when you're conscious of them, you can have a, a more, an even better sense of humor about your journey and just more higher consciousness. And with awareness increases our ability to have more choices. And so that's what we're talking about. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about our topic, but before we do, before we jump into that, Erin, please uh, introduce yourself as well. Hi, I'm Erin. I am, yes, Morgan and I have been besties for, um, Going on 14 years now, but we've known each other, uh, of each other from before that. So for, so you're not, we knew who, we knew who each other was. So our souls must have known that we were going to, we were going to end up on this path long before we met. So, um, so that's cause you said you channel through these. So I bet that's what's happening. Your soul is like, yeah, 15 years. Like, and I'm like, yeah, 13 physical, but you know, we've known each other for longer. So I'm Erin. Uh, I am a registered nurse. I have worked in pediatric, neonatal, and adult critical care. Um, I've seen the whole gamut of things and illnesses um, from congenital or things that people are born with to things that people acquire. Um, so I'm very passionate about um, people, about health prevention and, or I'm sorry, health promotion and illness prevention. Um, I am a recovering perfectionist which is much like a recovering alcoholic or something like, I feel like it never goes away and you're always kind of trying to battle it and quell it down. Um, so I'm an aspiring good enoughist. Um, I'm a health and wellness coach with Beachbody. So I help women and men if they're interested in um, the kind of the same thing with Morgan in the sense of creating the body that they want um, and finding ways around um, the bullshit that their mind's telling them to get what they want um, with nutrition and with home workouts or workouts they can still do in the gym. And so again, trying to really fight that battle um, of health and wellness throughout the world to have everybody um, get what they crave out of life. So here we are shooting these episodes and trying to help uh, propel people forward and uh, make our way through our own revolution. Yes, yes. And um, yes, the thing I, I forgot to mention, and when you talk about the recovering, you know, being a recovering perfectionista is, or not enoughist, is very similar to addiction energies, right? It's that yeah. same thing. And so um, one of the things for me along my journey is I overcame a lot of addictions, whether it was, you know, just like really abusing alcohol, um, abusing my body in a lot of ways, abusing my mind and body in a lot of ways. I talk about that 
in the book that I wrote, which is also what spurs a lot of these conversations or just different concepts and things from the book, um, which this week definitely is, you know, our topic this week is self-care. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what does that mean? What doesn't that mean? Um, and if you want to check out more for those watching and listening to go ahead and I would totally recommend the book as well, whether you have it already at your house, read it or reread it. You are a new you today than you were you know, yesterday. And so making sure it's like, I, I also read my own stuff because it's so heavily channeled. I can read it and be like, Oh crap, I forgot about that. So, um, and then also it's just sharing that whole journey of, you know, how do we shed the things that are no longer serving us and addiction energies we all play with in some way, shape, form or fashion or numbing energies. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for some people it might be TV, for some people it might be food, for some people it might be, um, toxic relationships, etc. So the book, I would check that out. It's an Amazon bestseller and it's a six time award winning book and I plan on winning more awards. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. So today we are going to talk a little bit about self care and what that actually can mean on such a deeper level than maybe what the mind might perceive it to mean when you first hear it and also what it doesn't mean. And, um, this was something that Aaron, why don't you tell a little bit about how this idea was spawned? What was going on for you? Oh yeah. Um, so just, first of all, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm about seven and a half, almost eight months pregnant. So if there's a lot of shifting around, it's because I'm currently growing someone else's body in my own body. And he takes up a lot of room these days. So I'm working on my second little boy. Um, so sorry. So excuse the shifting. Um, but where the self care came from, or when we talked about this as a topic was, you know, I had read your book and you have a section on self care and what that means. Um, and you know, it's probably such a huge well of information now, like emerging that to really define what self care is. And I think at the time you touched on as much as was available, like to the rest of the population. And now it's like, Oh, you hear about it all the time and what self care is. So you also had, um, in there ways to notify yourself, like an alert system of when you're not taking care of yourself. So I remember reading this and a lot of it, um, you know, you were talking about ways that you know how you're not taking care of yourself or you're not doing the things that recharge you. So for me along the way, what I've learned about the definition or what self-care means is it's how do you recharge yourself when your batteries are being depleted? And so you had given um, for yourself your alerts of when your batteries are being depleted, these were the signs you saw. So some of them for you particularly was like when your nails weren't painted. Um, you know, and stuff like that. And I remember reading it about self-care and thinking like, why do you self-care? Like I go get manicures and pedicures and, and I get haircuts and stuff like that. And I think that's a big misconception of like, that's what self-care is. And if you're just doing that, then you should be good. But the thing was, is I was doing those things, but I still wasn't happy with a lot of other aspects of my life, you know, or, or like my mindset. And so over time, I think why I thought this was so important is that as that's evolved, I have learned that, um, I think the big misconception is that it's not mindset is that it's just, you're doing, you're going through the motions. Oh, warning. There's a cat, butt. um, you're going through the motions. Tron's always got to join in. He needs some, he needs some self care right now. Some love. Um, you're going through the motions. Uh, and you're just like, yeah, dude, I'm totally taking care of myself, but you're still completely depleted. Um, so I thought this was so important to talk about that and like what it really means, what it means maybe to each of us, what our warning signs were, um, and what other people can extrapolate from it so they can figure it out too. Yeah. And one of the things with self care is it's not about, you know, if you're doing anything on autopilot, that's not self care. Right. And I think, so I love, I love that you break and bring this up because I, I see a lot of people come to me and say, I am doing self care, you know, whether it's women coming to me and saying, you know, I, I get massages, I get my right. hair done, I get yeah. that, you know, and it's like, okay. And yet, and, and I hear a lot of men say the same thing to me, like, well, I, 
you know, I go to the gym, I take care of my body, etc. The The thing is though, is it's really about how do you feel? Mm-hmm. Because when you have a really stellar energetic vibration, mm-hmm. it's usually a, an indication that you have some beautiful self-care intention, intentional, purposeful creation of self-care going on, mm-hmm. even if it's an unconscious uh, competence, right? Mm-hmm. So what we're talking about today is how do you bring self-care into a conscious state of competence for yourself so that when you do it, you're doing it and you know why you're doing it. And so even if you have, like sometimes I'll just have like this crazy high vibration, state of vibration, because a lot of things I am doing are on autopilot. Mm -hmm. The thing is though, is without then knowing, like all of a sudden I start, you know, one day I'll get really tired and I'm getting drained or I get kind of edgy or frustrated or I just notice I have, you know, less patience for people I love. You know, that's always like a huge clue. And it's like people that you legit love and you're like, and I just, I just like, I can't right now, you know? And so it's, it's just bringing more consciousness to this self-care revolution so that we can have competence in this area of our life, consciously, purposefully, and intentionally. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, again, it goes back to how you define success. I define success as how much time I get to be, how much time I get to spend loving being me. Mm -hmm. And so if my definition is how much time I get to spend loving being me, then when I'm irritated with people I love or when I'm losing my patience or when I'm tired or, you know, it's like, it's an opportunity. And I talk about this in the book. It's an opportunity for you to stop and get curious about what it is that you need to give to yourself Mm -hmm. in order for yourself to feel loved. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the ninja mind, that version of you that like wants to assassinate your greatness and it wants to make sure that you stay safe and comfy underneath a comfort blanket, it's going to start telling you a lie Mm -hmm. that your happiness is coming from external or you might start looking at what do others need to give to you in order for you to feel loved. Yeah. Re- revived or rejuvenated. I see people blame their boss. I see people blame, I've even worked with people who've blamed me um, mm-hmm. as a coach, right? It's like somehow it's my responsibility and it's just, you know, or, you know, I've seen people blame their spouse or their partner or their mm-hmm. lover or their parent or their child. Um, yeah. The power is in us. And so when, when that happens, when this blaming is going on, we have this ability to reclaim our power mm-hmm. through self-care. Right. And awareness of when we're on path and when we are off path. Mm -hmm. Do you want to share a little bit about um, your realizations as you were coming up uh, on what some things for yourself that were like, oh, okay, this is, I'm off path and this is how you learned it? For sure. I like what you're saying too, um, just before I even get started with that. And I think this has a big part of it is that Um, like you're saying like when you're really on a roll and in a groove and in the flow, like your self-care is on autopilot. Um, and I think what is cool about that, or like what I'm hearing you say is that basically like when you have gotten so good at being conscious about that and you know, really well, really clearly what recharges your batteries, it is easy to keep those things in steady rotation And so therefore it does like, it's not autopilot, but it's a habit. You've built in those habits and those safeguards in order to keep your, your batteries recharged all the time so that you maybe don't get to a completely depleted state. Um, so for me, I guess, I think the biggest realization that I, I, I came across for self-care was that it had very little to do in the beginning with physical or, um, aesthetic things, if that makes sense. Like, yes, working art out is definitely a part of, um, is definitely a part of self-care. Um, or, you know, yes, taking care of yourself and your outward appearance is definitely a part of self-care or self-care. But I remember reading your book and the big aha for me when I really started to think about this, and I remember sharing it with you was like, holy shit, like, it's the mindset behind it. And so that was what really changed it for me. It was like, no, self-care, like I need to take care of what's in here, the thoughts that are coming out and the thoughts behind it. 
you know, like you're saying, am I getting this manicure to, for myself because I enjoy my nails done or because I think that this is, you know, this color is the trend or it's the whatever. Um, you know, I think we get in society very quickly caught up on what we think others want from us or those external things that are going to make us happy. And I've totally fallen into that. But like, I remember having a conversation with you, like you're very bright in your nails. You know, you like bright, outrageous colors, bright, outrageous patterns, you know, for me, for my nails, like I've tried that. And there's a couple of like, you know, like this is a pink. I like this, but like, really I'm kind of a classic, like I want kind of the same four colors over and over again. And so if I'm going out and I'm getting hot yellow on my nails, like it doesn't actually feel so good to me. So it's just sticking with what feels good to me and what makes me feel like me, like you've talked about. Um, working out, you know, a lot of people like you're talking about with working out, exercise can be such an amazing form of self-care. Obviously you're caring for this body that was given to you on this earth and the only one you're going to get. So celebrating that. But the problem is most people I feel like, and I mean, myself included, spend years actually using exercise as a form of punishment. Mm. That's not self-care you're beating the shit out of yourself because you feel in some way you're unworthy instead of when your mindset is like, I'm doing this to make sure my you know, body is functioning efficiently, that it's functioning at its optimal capacity, um, that I feel sexy and um, you know, complete in what I've got and loving every part of me, flaws and all. That's self-care. So like, you know, working on my mindset first and foremost was a huge, huge aha. And then, um, and then as I think I've gotten older, my self-care has changed in the sense of like, I actually need, I need more alone time and I'm okay with that. And that like, just realizing what evolves over time to recharge your batteries. So like, I know with some of my own alerts, like sitting by myself in total quiet or reading or something like that is going to recharge my batteries. Whereas, you know, I think a lot of people think that sitting in front of Netflix is like, well, I am, I'm doing self-care. I'm taking this time for me, but is it really self-care or is it a numbing tactic? Cause I mean, I've totally fallen into that too. So another big thing I've realized too, when I'm starting to go on empty, I feel like I want a Netflix binge hard and I don't want to watch one episode. I want four hours. And then I'm like, okay, stop. Something's wrong. Like you need to take some massive time for yourself to just regroup um, and figure out in what way you need to do that. So like those have been really just the mindset thing has been the biggest for me. Yeah. And I love what you're, you're saying this piece around self care evolves. And so is you evolve and grow, the things that maybe allowed you to feel loved before Mm -hmm. or taken care of or rejuvenated or revived may not be the things anymore. And that can be confusing, Mm -hmm. you know? And so it's understanding that giving yourself permission to continuously tap into what would allow me to feel the most excited to be me in this moment or what do I need? It's Mm -hmm. like, it's like stopping and asking yourself, Hey, like, what do you need? And you know, there's, there's a piece around. So as an example, one of the things that as I have evolved, a piece of self care for me is delegation because it's allowing me to go, what, what is it in this moment that would allow me, like I noticed, you know, because I am a light worker, because I'm an intuitive, because I have such a high platform and life of servitude and touching the amount of souls I touch, mm-hmm. I have a tendency to serve, 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 give, give, give. And I mm-hmm. realized a couple of months ago that it had been 10 years straight of me not really sitting still. Yeah. And at one point, the things that were totally fueling my soul I just was like, it was like heavy and I was tired. And to your point, like all of a sudden I'm binging on TV. I don't watch TV. I hadn't had a TV in like five years. And all of a sudden I was watching TV. And so I got conscious and curious and I was like, what's going on? And what I realized is that I'm at a place in my life where I needed that time. I needed a couple of months to go internal. I gave myself permission to just stop and also to focus on 
creating love and connection because I'm in a new, in a new, I'm in Miami now. I was in Chicago. So when our life changes, when transition happens, it's stopping and giving yourself permission that self care doesn't need to look the same way that it once did. And, Mm -hmm. or to your point, if you're doing self care, at one point, maybe you were working out because you're loving on your body and now you notice you're pushing yourself and you're doing it because you are upset with your body or upset with yourself yeah. you don't feel enough. Mm-hmm. So checking in with the intention and with the evolution, right, for the delegation, what I realized was in order for me to grow my business exponentially as it has year over year to continue to do that, and also love being me while I'm doing that, mm-hmm. it's important for me to delegate. So little things like, you know, I had a guy come clean the pool today and it just made me feel like it's my signal to me, hey, focus on something else you love doing mm-hmm. or take a break or, you know, and also things like, you know, I, t- I told you the other day, um, Instacart, you know, oh, yeah. grocery shopping. It's Asking ourselves, are we doing activities because we want to and they're feeding our soul or are we doing yeah. them because we're just passing time or we feel like we have to where we don't really know that we can outsource or delegate? So it's just yeah. consciously having these conversations with ourselves. What is depleting us and what is fueling us and then consciously making an effort to spend more time doing the things that fuel us and mm-hmm. less time doing the things that deplete us. And when, like I said, when you notice that you are around someone that you love, this is a great example. When you're around someone you love and they're depleting you, Mm -hmm. which is inevitable, especially if you're married or in a serious relationship or, you know, I had my um, toddler. Yeah. You have a kid or, you know, I had my dad in town with me for eight days. And so it's like, I love spending time with him. And yet it, and this is, this is something you and I talked about. It got to a point where. And you'll start noticing your own patterns around self-care. I notice mm-hmm. that if I'm 24 seven with someone that on about the fourth or fifth day with him, it was the fifth day. Um, I kind of hit a wall energetically. I'm an empath. I absorb energies. I love my dad. He's very similar to me. So I knew that I could be honest with him about how I was feeling. And yet for, for my own self-care and asking myself, what do I need? And yet I still felt guilty. Yeah. I like do this work all the time and I still felt guilty, right? So it's like giving ourselves permission, even as light workers, to be human. And which is one of the current things I'm working on a lot, which is really beautiful. And so I'm helping usher others into that space as well. And so I just I remember I remembered stopping and asking, like, whoa, what do you need? Because if you yeah. don't put you first today, then you're not gonna enjoy the extra days that he's staying. You're not gonna be yeah for those extra days. So you're actually, what you think is, is the kind thing to do, like push through and keep going is actually not because then you're robbing yourself and that other person of your full presence. Yeah. So I asked myself what I needed and then I honored that Mm -hmm. even amongst the discomfort of having to say to my dad, you know, I just need a day to myself. I know you're here. I know that might sound crazy, you know, and my dad, because he's just like me, was like, oh, I get it. Don't worry about it. And he's like, I'll just watch a movie or, you know, and so I gave myself permission to do what felt right instead of what I felt like I should. And that's mm-hmm. also a piece of self-care is that mindset that you're not going to be guilted into doing things that, mm-hmm. that aren't fueling you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, that's funny you mentioned that because like you and I, when we go on trip, um, for your corporate job, like you and I never fight ever. And by the time trip was over, we were always kind of very much like, like we would just set each other and like, not like be mean. Well, we got kind of mean to each other, but it was just like, I'm ready to go home. Yeah. I'll talk to you. And then what was funny is like, we were people who would talk like every day and we'd go home from trip and like, Kevin would be like, how's Morgan? I'm like, we haven't talked in a week. We just need some space. But like, right. Cause like we were together the entire time in close quarters. So that makes a lot of sense by day four or day five. And these were six, seven day trips. And I'm kind of the same way, you know, where I need the break. So I think, uh, I love what you're saying about delegation. And I listen to an amazing podcast and I hear this all the time, especially from women. Cause we have that you know, that guilt that we've got to do it all, especially if we're moms and we're working or whatever is I don't have time. 
Um, and so obviously there are certain things we might not be able to delegate, right? Like if my husband's working and I've got my toddler, I can't be like, I need you to throw in the laundry two and a half year old. Well, I mean, I could, he'd, he'd probably try, but who knows what would happen. But like there are certain things you obviously can't delegate, um, or that maybe you can't like responsibilities you can't alter or, you know, escape in that sense. However, I listened to this amazing podcast once that really opened my eyes. Um, and this really opened the door for um, being able to fit pockets of self-care into my life was where's your part-time job? Looking at your daily schedule, looking at where you're spending your time and trying to find out, you know, being really honest with yourself and being like, where am I wasting my time on things that aren't recharging me that maybe they're not depleting you, but maybe they're not, maybe they're not doing anything for you. So like, you know, scrolling social media, this kind of stuff like that, you know, um, or zoning out on Netflix. So I remember listening to that and being like, oh my God, okay, I've got to really look at this. And that was how, and I've talked about this, I think maybe in other episodes and just like, you know, being like, I don't have time to work out. And then I was getting up early because I knew from a self-care perspective that getting up before anyone in my house needed me was better for me and everybody else that recharged my batteries. But then with that, did I need an hour? So all of a sudden though, I was looking at it being like, <gasps> I have seven hours a week to work out because I'm up one hour earlier than everyone else in the house. So then I was able to fit another caveat of self-care into my schedule and started to tweak and look at things and be like, where else can I fit other forms of self-care into pockets where I was previously wasting time acting like I was being productive and then being like, I don't have time. Um, and so one of the things I'm experimenting with now uh, is actually creating like a schedule for me and not like a rigid one, but like looking at, cause I've got a full-time job, I've got a family, um, you know, I'm pregnant, whatever. And I'm, and I'm doing the beach body thing of like where I can efficiently use my time, but also still schedule in things that recharge and refuel me like my workouts, like personal development books. Um, you know, making sure I take a day to like be silent. I don't know, take a bath or a shower and just like spend all the time I want doing my hair and putting an extra face mask on and lotioning up and, you know, listening to music or reading a book or doing something like that, that actually does make me feel a whole lot better. And so, um, that I think it'll allow me to keep, um, accountable to if I'm starting to, you know, waste time in places and be like, Hey, what's that really doing for me? Yeah, for sure. I mean, what you're describing is consciousness, right? Yeah. And so I think that's a thing. And I just keep hearing you, with evolution and transition, you have to really make sure that you're even more conscious. Mm -hmm. Because so like, as an example for you, you're pregnant, right? So about to have a baby. So walking into pregnancy means that your self care shifts, but you need some consciousness yeah. around it walking into having two kids instead of one is mm -hmm. going to change it. And so it's just about consciously constructing your you time, your, your self love, your self care. Um, and to your point is, you know, we've said it, like, but just saying it again, cause it's so important is numbing, like really getting clear on what are, what are your distraction mechanisms and your numbing mechanisms? Yeah. They're not self care. They're not self love. They're not adding to your ability to trust yourself and to thrive and to have confidence and to love yourself. They're actually often doing the opposite because then you feel guilty that you spent four hours watching Netflix yeah. You know, versus asking yourself in this moment, what is it that I could do that would actually revive me? And you may, and just listening to what the answer is that comes up. Maybe it's mm -hmm. a massage. Maybe it's a walk with the dog. Maybe it is, you know, a drive in your car. Maybe you just go, some days I ask myself that question and I sit silently um, for like an hour in a room with no lights on. You know, yeah. it's, it's honoring and not judging what your body is asking for, what your yeah. mind is asking for, what your soul is asking for, what your emotions is asking for. And again, I think it's guilt plays such a huge role. Guilt and throat chakra are what's coming up. Mm. The guilt and fear and the, like, we just need to decide what do we want? Mm -hmm. This is like the formula for life. What do you want? 
Right. And then you have to ask for it. So you have to decide, commit, be all in. What do you actually want? And then you have to vocalize that. You have to ask for it, whether it's to yourself and putting it into action right. or whether it's to others. Another thing that feels really big here is this piece around your alert system. So I talk about this mm -hmm. in the book. Um, I'm working on the audio book right now. And so because the audio, so the book was written in lady language for the ladies, but so many men asked me to start creating things that include them because the stuff is relevant for them. So I call it in the audio book, the epic sexy you alert system. It's basically just what's the most favorite version of you in that moment that you want to experience. And then what are the things that typically when you notice yourself doing them, they're clues to you that you are giving too much to the world and you're not giving to yourself. You know? And so for me, so my nails are painted. Um, it's not, it's not about, for, for me, the reason the nails, like I, it's, it's interesting nails painted plants. If I haven't watered the plants in a while, mm. it's like you wouldn't even think that would normally be a thing. But I noticed that the other day I was like, crap, if I'm not taking 10 minutes to water, cause I've got a bunch of plants. If I'm not taking 10 or 15 minutes to water all of these plants, what else am I not pausing to taking the time to do the mm. nails chipping? is like, I just, I started noticing how my mind would tell me stories about when my, my nails were chipping. So that yeah. doesn't mean that's for everyone. It's just for me. Um, if I notice that, you know, I haven't gone outside to spend, and as I'm saying this, I realize like it's been, well, that's not true. I, I was outside yesterday, but you know, just understanding like I live in this gorgeous, amazing place, heaven on earth, this really dope backyard and awesome pool the uh, pergola and this whole area that I can just it's really this divine yummy creation and if I'm not mm -hmm. spending time out there it's a sign that I'm not loving on myself consciously I'm not get, you know and yet these are all just these subconscious things that are underneath the surface that you can use as alert system that you're off path also mm -hmm. for me are things like every single time I'm craving pizza yeah Every time. And I, so I'm, I'm vegan now because I've healed myself of five autoimmune diseases. I say that because I've healed myself. It, obviously it wasn't what they thought it was because it was healed literally. Like I changed my diet and literally healed my body overnight. Yeah. Um, after 30 years of being in a substantial amount of, of pain and suffering. And so, um, so it's like, and yet pizza is kind of my... Like I really miss it, and yet I miss it the most when I notice that I haven't been putting myself first. It, to me, pizza is almost that clue I've been working too much. Mm -hmm. um, there's also things like, you know, in the book I talk about my avatar spicy McChicken. Mm -hmm. So when I am irritated, or when I am frustrated, or when I'm snapping, or in my mind, mm -hmm. I've gotten really good at filtering from yeah. head to mouth because spicy is just a jerk or she, she just like, she's just not very kind. It's just, she's angry. She's sad. She's got all sorts. She's like a, a bag of mess. Yeah. So what happens is she's triggered when I'm, which is great. I get to leverage her. She's triggered every single time I am giving, 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 giving externally and not giving to myself. So in a way mm -hmm. she's a really beautiful validation for me. Uh, and a, and a mirror to me that mm -hmm. like, Hey, it's time for some me time. So I just yeah. these tiny little things that allow us to actually see we are not on path and for everyone, it's going to be something a little bit different. And yet it just, it requires consciousness, mm -hmm. you know, and, and listening to what, you know, having conversations like you and I have, right. Having mm -hmm. these conversations with your own inner circle about like, Hey, here's the concept what do you think your self care things are? You can get ideas and inspiration from other people. You know, right. they're, you know, they're different things. Um, and then it's interesting too, cause I'm just asking, I'm, as I'm, I'm sitting here, it's like asking, you know, just kind of playing that game. Like, what is it that you really want? Like asking the body, asking the soul. And it's like, it wants to go be on a beach. Yeah. And I live 20 minutes from the beach so I can do that. Right. And yet I haven't, it's been, it's been like, I did it while my dad was in town. So it was maybe a couple days ago, but at the same time, like, by myself on a beach in a bikini mm -hmm. and just anchoring my feet and grounding into the water and just being mm -hmm. nowhere to go, you know? And that's another thing too. Um, I noticed for myself and for a lot of people, especially when we are very successful and we have a lot of roles that we are playing, mm -hmm. describe that as well, right? We have a lot of roles yeah. and a lot of things that we're doing. Um, we have a tendency to, I got this feedback. It was actually really great feedback. One of my girlfriends said to me, um, so 
I, one of the things I was asking certain, some people was like, what is it that you think would, that from an outsider looking in, you think would add more happiness to my life? And she Mm -hmm. basically said to me, um, that I, she's like, I think that it's amazing how productive you are and how successful you are and how much you've created for your life. Mm -hmm. She said at the same time, I don't notice a lot of flexibility or spontaneity. Yeah. You and I have talked about this. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, wow. And she basically was like, what if you just did like one entire day every week where you just didn't plan anything? And I was like, it was so uncomfortable. Yeah. And yet, it's been so brilliant. You and I have been having random phone conversations for yeah. hours and, you know, and so understanding you're a part of my self care. Um, mm-hmm. spontaneity is a part of my self care. So now I know if I'm not, if I'm planning everything, yeah, I find that I'm off path, which I didn't realize until I'm saying out loud. So again, that's why talking about these things with your inner circle is really powerful. Yeah. And for me, like you're saying, spicy McChicken comes out. Um, for me, comfy slob. So anyone who's read the book, or if you haven't yet, I'm the OG comfy slob. You're all welcome. Um, so if I am running on 10 or on, if I'm on empty tanks, my comfy slob avatar comes out and is like, she wants to protect me. And she's like, girl, we got it. It's good. Just get on that couch and watch Netflix where no one can bother us. And you and I are not saying that like, oh, Netflix is the devil and like, you shouldn't watch it. Um, it's again, it's, it's figuring out what about it or what your alerts are. And for me, right. When I want to watch four hours in a row after my son goes to bed, because my husband works evenings, that is a problem. Um, you know, for some people, like part of your self-care, especially like your relationship self-care might be watching a show together on Netflix, you know, where like you're actively discussing the plot line and the plot twists and the character development. You know, my husband and I just watched Mindhunter and we had a lot of conversation around it, you know, or we go see movies and we have a lot of conversation around it. So like it actually is a relationship builder, not just something we go through the motions and do, But if we're watching TV for four hours a night, like that's a problem where we're just kind of like, and like maybe on our phones and like not really connecting or anything like that's, that's a problem and that's not self-care. So that was a side tangent, but yes, comfy slob comes out. And, um, for me, I know with her, if she's out, I have not done a good job of taking care of myself. And I have a tendency what I've realized in the last like month or two, I've got a tendency to be either on like 10 or like one because I get so exhausted from being on 10 that then I'm like, you know, especially being pregnant, like I don't have the energetic capacity for that. So trying to be maybe at a consistent level of like a five, you know, and, and be consistent. Um, cause I'm consistently inconsistent. So just trying to like figure that out in order to then temper my energy so that I don't end up depleted. But like, if I start wearing, if I start wanting to wear my contacts or I'm sorry, my glasses instead of my contacts, cause now I've switched over to mostly contacts. Um, I know comfy slabs coming. If I want to watch Netflix, um, if I start scrolling mindlessly on Instagram, for a very large amount of time. Not like the like, oops, shit, you know, 40 minutes has passed, but if like I'm doing that, I'm avoiding something. And so then I start asking myself like, okay, what am I protecting myself from? Maybe it's something emotional. Um, maybe it's some form of turmoil, or maybe I've just been running too hard with something and I need to like, I need to back off and try to find that balance. So those are usually my, my alerts. Potatoes, yeah. we talk about that. Potatoes. Oh my gosh, I get pictures of potatoes. It's always yes. Fun. That was actually the original gangster uh comedy slob, the OG comedy slob was um that was her thing. She liked she liked potato she liked fries and potatoes. Glasses and pajamas. <laughs> um yeah, it's also, you know, just it's understanding we're just sharing our examples so that everyone listening and watching is able to come up with their own ideas uh, or their own things. Some, you know, it's just, it's under, it's getting a very conscious integration of being intentional about what you're doing and why you're doing it. And, um, yeah, to your point. So if you tend to be an extremist, I, I am, I, I, I deal with that as well, which, you know, it's just knowing like, 
actually work with a lot of really, really high powered, successful individuals that that is that pattern where it's like, we actually want to increase their productivity and their efficiency without compromising being at 10. Yeah. And one of the ways to do that is to be so vigilantly conscious about self care that you're like, cool, you can actually run at 10. You can't yeah. you have to go down to a five. This is what I've seen. And this is what I'm hearing. You, you just have to then be so vigilant mm-hmm. about pulling yourself into a 10 self care. So it's like, great. 10 on like you're running at full, you're going da da da. Great. Also let's throw in some 10 self care. Like your self care has to be such a high caliber of intention and concentration. It's kind of like if you're working out, mm-hmm. you can eat a lot more f- healthy food yeah. Because your body actually needs it to fuel it. It's the same thing with self care. So, your nourishment of self care, if you tend to be at an extreme of, a, or, you know, extreme performer, an extreme, a high achiever, mm-hmm. then you just have to make sure that you have really, really conscious, high, high levels of self care and learning to find indulgence in that self-care versus that irritation. I can always feel that irritation where it's like, oh, but I should be doing this. And it's just like understanding why self-care is so powerful and how it's actually going to fuel you and how it's going to prevent you. So for my high achievers watching, it's going to prevent you from going to one because when you go to burnout, when you get there, you waste weeks mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, because what happens is you stop the momentum of physics, right? And so you stop yeah. the energy and then to, then you have to build it back up versus, yeah. you know, and so playing with that. Um, and so it's just, again, it just comes to, and so that's why that alert system is so powerful is it allows you to see, okay, oh, man, I'm a little off base, you know, mm-hmm. also some other things for me are things like, you know, things that, it's interesting. At one point I was going to write an entire list of, of clues and put them on my refrigerator of like, here are all the ways that I know that I'm off path. And then I was like, okay, that's just going to encourage more ways of being off path or drive me crazy when I notice 10 things are off path. So then I reframed it and I was like, here are all the things I can do that are self care that allow me to stay in my bliss zone. So paint my, like pick one, you know, on the list. So like paint your nails, uh, get some yummy groceries, get some green yeah. juices. And also people ask me all the time, what do you think I should do? What do you think I should do? What do you think I should do? What is self-care? What do you think self-care could be for me? Blah, blah, blah. Ask yourself those questions. Like right now, and I don't want to say this out loud, my comfy slob does not want to say this out loud, but what has been screaming at me for like several days, because I'm, I've, I've been noticing I'm a little off kilter. I'm in really epic transition. I'm in a new location. I'm in a new relationship. There's a lot of things that have transitioned. My dad was here for eight days. I have a lot of things that are going on. And so I can feel myself just getting like, not being in, in, in a, in a space and place of just like that divine bliss. I'm doing a lot of soul growth, which is amazing. And at the same time, like when you're doing a lot of soul growth, it's like a lot of soul exercise. You need to nourish yourself even more. Mm -hmm. And what my, um, my body is asking for my soul, my mind, they're all asking for me to take my dog for a run. So the cool thing is, is that since you, uh, showed up an hour early, um, you know, I'll have an extra two hours before my next session with a client, my one-on-one client. So what's nice. really cool. Yeah. So, so that's going to be my commitment is we're going to get off and I'll send you a selfie of me running. Um, perfect. So, you know, so it's just the reason I share that is we all know the answers to our mm-hmm. own guidance. We just need to give ourselves, we, we need to stop that pattern that we learned of that. Yeah. Like someone else knows what's best for us. No, you do. You have the answer. Um, and listen to it. It may not make sense for someone. It may be like, you know, like the first time I heard go in a room that's dark, turn the lights off. Or I saw the vision, you know, like go in a room and just be silent. I was like, Mm -hmm. what? Like really? And I did it. And I was like, oh my God, that was, it was like going for a deep tissue massage or yesterday. Part of my self care was working with a spiritual practitioner on some energy work, you know? And so it's like giving to others what I give to myself. I, I'm sorry, giving to myself what I give to others. I typically do energy work with other people or I do coaching or, you know, I help channel spirit for people. And so it's understanding to, to be able to find practitioners that I can work with to give that gift back to myself. So 
I feel like We've covered a lot, um, you know, basically some of the key pieces are understand what self-care actually is for you and what it isn't. Start identifying where you're numbing and distracting mm-hmm. yourself, where you actually are calling it self-care, but get really radically honest and call yourself out on your bullshit that that's mm-hmm. not actually self-care if you're not right. fueled from it. Um, looking at if, you know, where is your current level of energy in a day? If you're a high, high, high achiever, then you need a high, high, high regimen of self-care. It ha- you know, in order to prevent that burnout, because that will actually allow you to be even more efficient, even more productive. And it's kind of like, you know, you can, anyone can go to an office for eight hours a day. Yeah. But how much productivity are you actually doing? And having been right. in the corporate world, I just remember like, days and weeks could go by and you didn't actually do anything versus, yeah. you know, you have a different level of accountability when you're an entrepreneur, which is cool. So, um, and yet that still doesn't stop the extremists going down to one if you're not vigilant on your self care, yeah. um, paying attention to the amount of time that you love being you and, and the things that you're, what are the things you're typically doing when you love being you? Who are the people you're around? I talk about that in the book as well in the mm-hmm. pain section or the drain. Uh, I think it's the drain the drain game, the game drain. Um, and yeah. And just making sure that you're taking time to stop, pause and listen to yourself. You're creating your own alert system and, um, just tackling one tiny piece at a time, you know? So it's like, we throw a lot at you on these webisodes, but it's so that you can just keep so that your mind, it's like, we're planting subconscious seeds as we're talking and just understanding, you know, like, even like you said, Aaron, it's, you read the book years ago yeah. and it's now with this new layer of consciousness that you have because you've expanded and all of the work that you've done on yourself. It's like, mm-hmm. this is integrating at an even deeper level for you, you know? Yeah. And so just trusting that whatever you hear today is exactly what you're meant to hear and that you can come back and watch this again, um, you know, six months from now and you actually yeah. understand this on a deeper, more profound level. So, um, and I don't know why I'm hearing uh, this final piece around making sure to um, to look at your like the the way that you start your morning. You know, it's like yeah. how are you consciously feeding your body, mind, and soul. There are all these different pieces of us, right? There's yeah. the emotional body, the intuitive body, the uh, mental body, the spiritual body, and so it's understanding how are you consciously feeding and nourishing mm-hmm. those every single day. And, you know, as I'm saying this, I'm saying this just as much to myself. It's like, there are things that we do and then it just becomes autopilot, which I think is where some of my stuff is. And that's not actually feeding me consciously, which is why I'm going to go take Izzy for a run. Nice. Yeah. And then I guess the only other thing I would add, and I think we kind of touched on it, if, if it's not obvious already is that self-care is not selfish. Yeah. There is a large, I think there is a, there is a stigma that self-care and especially as women, we tend to feel guilty that it is selfish, that it is selfish to schedule a getaway with your girlfriends, you know, where the only ass you've got to wipe is your own. Um, which for me this past weekend I just did and it was amazing. Obviously I was texting you about it, but like, I didn't do anything that great, but like to shower by myself. I just let my hair air dry and just lotion and like take my time doing everything. Like, so recharge my batteries and just made me like, we talked about when I came home, you were on the phone with me when my son woke up and I'm like, God, you just look so much more handsome to me. Like, do you, did you get more handsome when I left? And you're like, no, no dummy. You just went out and took care of yourself. So now he's like, you know, even more attractive to you. So it is hilarious. Like you see things so differently and it's just so not selfish. Like, we all have this misconception that, you know, before we're really conscious of it, that, um, that it's going, that taking care of yourself or doing these things for yourself is going to take away from those around you that you love. And it's so the opposite. So really this is something that is so worth it. The return on the investment in yourself is just exponential. Yeah. Your instincts are going to want to tell you, I I cover that in the book too. Like your instincts are going to want to tell you that you're being selfish. That's where that guilt came in. So my instincts told me spend time with your daddy is in town for eight days. It's your daddy. doesn't live by you anymore. Blah, 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 blah. Right. My intuition was screaming at me and my body. Like I just did, I didn't have any energy. I just didn't. I I get depleted. It's like a, you know, a plant that needs water and I needed water in a way that, you know, was my own unique 
formula. And mm-hmm. so I, I honored that and then was able to be present with him for the next two days or else I yeah. would have been down for the count. And like you said, you know, when we went on trips together and then we'd come back and be like, I can't, you know, be around you. So yeah. that's the other thing too is um, I, I think that, and this is a balance, um, just something to, to kind of play with, but you know, even it's interesting, like, you know, you're saying yes, as women, there, there's a lot of, um, where we, where we feel, you know, especially as caretakers and nurturers, where we feel like we need to give, 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 and that we're responsible to take care of everyone around us. Um, there's also something about really honoring our soul brothers and the men in our life that, there's often times where if we are not doing self care and they are because they're typically a little bit better at, yeah, um, that we then tell them that they're being selfish. So yeah, just something totally. to, to be aware of because you know, for my gents listening and watching, I'm noticing this trend where men are starting to um, lose some of their own masculinity because they're mm. buying the guilt of. Yes, I've and, got. I've heard that about like. I've seen it like men, like people being like, Oh, it must be nice. You just are able to like go to the gym and not think about it. And it's like, then these women are sitting at home because they feel too guilty leaving their kids or putting their kids in the daycare of the gym and the husbands don't even think about it. But then right. They're being guilted and in, in, they're being guilted out of their self care practices. Awesome point. Yeah. There's a difference between, you know, uh, being self-absorbed and thinking that, you know, being the center of your universe, if you want to share it with other people, like, yeah. like narcissism tendencies or right. um, arrogance tendencies, or just yeah. a selfish tendency where it's like, I don't care how this is going to impact anyone else. It's all about me or like other people are losing around you. But the thing about self care is that everyone legitimately wins. It's just that typically people who are triggered by other people's self care are ones that are not good at it. So if you're triggered by someone else's self care around you, mm-hmm. um, great point you know, it's, it's paying attention. So there's a difference between being living your life as if you're alone, but you're sharing it with someone Mm -hmm. and taking care of yourself and encouraging your partner to take care of themselves as well. Right. So understanding instinctually your partner. Um, it's always funny to me because sometimes I feel like, and this has happened to me too, where it's like, I'm ready for, you know, I'm in a relationship I'm building. It's amazing. And it's like, I'm ready for, just like a day to myself or some time to myself or, you know, and I'm not saying it for whatever reason. It's that instinct of just like, keep going. And, you know, and then, uh, the other person is like, Oh, I'm going to go spend time with my friends or I'm going to, you know, and there's an instinctual strange weirdness where you're like, you know, and it's actually, it's best for both of you. It's best for, you know, and so it's understanding. It's just, honoring your intuition over your instincts. And, um, I know that sounds so strange, but it's always the message that comes through is Mm -hmm. like, it's counter instinctual, but completely intuitive. And we need, we have been conditioned to live in instincts, which instincts are typically survival. Yeah. And we're not here to survive. We're here to thrive. And I hear a lot of, yeah, but yeah, but I want to, you know, survive when you're thriving, you're always surviving, but when you're surviving, you're never thriving. Yeah. You know? And so it's just understanding if you lead with thriving, and the self care, like you'll get the the survival comes along with it. Yeah, right. right. So. Yeah, no one's like I'm thriving, and then they drop, you know, dead or whatever of like depletion. <laughs> yeah, they might drop dead. Like I plan on at 103 years old going out, maybe on a skydive or a hang glider yeah. or you know something. So I might drop dead, but I'll be I'll be so happy. Yeah, um, yeah, you know. The yeah, person right. who's attached to me will not be happy um, that I died, but you know, they're going to take one for the team. It'll be good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us. We will do more episodes as always. If you have any ideas of topics you would like us to cover, drop uh, your comments below and let us know, um, or, you know, just drop some comments, share some love, um, and also right. share this with people who you feel like would benefit from this as well. And we will catch you again soon. Bye. Bye.